Hi, everyone, and happy Wednesday, and happy almost Christmas. Now, I know that this year has been unforgettable for so many reasons, and many of those are wrong reasons. And I also know that these are not, they are not the most jolliest or joyous of times for the holiday. But I just want all of us, I, I encourage all of us to just take some big deep breaths. And we're gonna take a few of those in a, a minute. But just to take breaths and just to do an inventory, to do an inventory of all of the, the um, amazing things that are in our lives right here and right now, you know, to just focus on the blessings. Because even in this craziest of times, there are so many amazing, amazing things that we can feel grateful for, that we can feel in full gratitude. And the new year is almost here. And I know, I absolutely believe that 2021 is going to be a much better year for all of us. We are going to get through this pandemic. The vaccine is going to come out. We are going to have more herd immunity. Like we're going to get back on our feet for sure. And we are going to take all this amazing knowledge and wisdom that we've accumulated over the last eight months. You know, for so many of us, we've, we've had resets. We've had time to go inward. We've had time to like really look at some of the things in our life that we didn't have time to look at in the past. You know, I really believe that if we just focus, focus inwardly and bravely facing these changes, we're going to all be amazing. And that's why I'm really, really, really excited about our guest today, because we are right on the heels to start a new year. And this woman, she really understands deeply the need to refresh, the need to renew, our commitment to finding deep meaning, finding love, finding purpose, embracing prosperity, and discovering more joy in our lives in 2021. I'm really thrilled to introduce all of you to Kine Corder. Kine is a money mentor. She's a certified hypnotherapist, a CEO and founder of Presidential Lifestyle. And our community knows that we do a frame up call. And I have to tell you guys, we're doing this frame up call and I'm literally texting my team going, oh my God, this woman is so smart. Like, I love what she's saying. I'm like, and, and you know, I have to tell you at this point, I just sometimes feel I'm not easily impressed. Like I'm not that person that gets so easily impressed. So yeah. the fact in the in the frame up call that I'm texting my girls and I'm texting the team and they're writing me back and they're like, dang, I know, like she is really smart. Like she's got oh. some amazing things to say. So guys, I am so excited to introduce Kine to all of you today. Welcome Kine. Awesome, thank you for having me. That is so sweet. I am glowing over here. I just love that. Thank you so much. But it's totally true. I mean, we were like literally doing that. So, um, <laughs> and that doesn't happen. Like, honestly, like that was really, I mean, first of all, the stuff um, that you talked about for us was like fresh. It, like, it wasn't even that everything you said was so new, but there was a way in which you deliver a message that it's like, you have your own lane. You have your own lane in which you do it. And really it's your genius, like you're brilliant. So I'm, I'm so happy to be able to share this with our community. So let's just jump right in. Like, let's just jump right in and, uh, so we've been talking a lot about, you know, pivoting and how to find more meaning in our life in 2021. 
but this is really what you talk about. So like, what are the things and the way people, what can they be doing? What can they be thinking about to actually, you know, start taking those concrete steps to make 2021 like a year of deep meaning and fulfillment? Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, you did jump right in. So <laughs> Okay, so we are jumping right in. I'm with you. Let's jump right in. But I want us to do it slowly. So before we even take any steps, yeah, let's just gain some awareness. Let's just notice, like notice how you feel. Notice what happened this year. Kind of, these are the three things I want you to notice. Notice what you lost, which everybody is doing a great job at that, right? But I also want you to notice what you gained, and then notice what you'd like to maintain. Cause there were some shifts some pivots, like Lavinia said, there were some shifts and some pivots that happened that you might want to maintain in 2021. Right. But there might be some things that you lost that you're like, you know what, let that stay gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I really want you to just take awareness, take notice. But what I really like, really, really want you to notice right now is what do you want to feel? Mm. Because we spend a lot of time talking about how we feel currently right now. And mm. if we want to continue to feel that way, then that would be fine to focus on that. But if you want to feel something different, then you need to shift your focus because what we focus on expands. We want to now focus on how we really want to feel. And you might not even know that, but I want you to start to think about it. And we call it like that pre-contemplation stage. So before you take action, before you even think about taking action, Think about thinking about it. Mm. I know that sounds crazy, but just like allow yourself to say, could I do that? Like, would that be possible for me? Absolutely, it would be, but you got to give yourself permission to even think that way because we've been programmed to do three things. And those three things are complain. We can do that easily, right? And everybody wants to hear it when we're complaining. But you tell somebody, like I fell in love in 2020. So you tell somebody you're all in love. You got this great man. They're like, you're right. She's lying. I mean, ain't that good. So <laughs> you can't really tell people your good news. But when it's time to complain, everybody wants to hear it. And so we've been programmed to complain. Mm -hmm. We've also been programmed to compare, compare mm -hmm. ourselves to others. And sometimes going back to that, complaining and not being able to talk about your good news. Sometimes we compare ourselves to others and we say, oh shoot, 2020 wasn't actually that bad for me. So maybe I shouldn't say anything. I shouldn't celebrate the grit that I fell in love because some people lost love. They actually lost the person they loved in 2020. And that is horrible. And I'm so, my heart goes out to them, but that doesn't mean I don't get to celebrate my good news. Mm -hmm. Those are two separate things. And I want to make sure you're clear and become aware that somebody can be sad and you can be happy at the same time. Those things can happen at the same time. Can you feel for them and still be happy yourself? Absolutely. And the last thing that I want you to be aware of in this awareness area and this notice is competing. Where mm -hmm. have you been competing? with your siblings, with your neighbors, even maybe even with your parents. Like, I gotta be better than they were. Mm. Stop it, stop it. It's not about comparing. It does not matter what is happening outside of you. Anything that's happening outside of the world is a mute point. It doesn't even matter. What matters is what's happening inside of you. So mm. that's why I want you to get aware. I want you to take notice of how you want to feel. So you can let go of how you don't want to feel. So could you bring us through like a little exercise of that? Like what that, like when you say what we want to feel, because I think everybody wants to feel joy and they want to feel happiness, right? Like, but what, how, what might be the ways in which we get there? So there are a couple ways. Um, so we have a course called Control the Controllable. But before I go into that, I think what would be important is to help you understand the feeling, right? Mm. So maybe before I fell in love this year, believe it or not, I'd never been in love before. Like, so I didn't even know how I felt. I was like, mm, it, it, I, I think it's, I saw enough Disney movies to know it <laughs> exists, right? <laughs> Happily ever after that exists, right? Yeah, right. So, 
but I didn't really, really know how I felt, but I could compare it to something else. So that's what I'm going to ask you to do. Maybe you don't know how you want to feel, but mm -hmm. maybe you compare it to something else. So mm -hmm. an example I use a lot is for my parents. If you remember the joy you felt when you became a parent, right? Mm -hmm. An example I use a lot is maybe you graduated or accomplished something, right? Let's say you graduated. Remember that joy you felt that it was over accomplished. You did it. Mm -hmm. That feeling, you're familiar with that, right? Mm -hmm. So find a feeling that you are familiar with. So mm -hmm. you felt joy before in your life. You might not feel it right now, but right. you felt it before, right? And if you haven't, maybe you felt gratitude, which is even better if you can tap into some gratitude. And you're like, oh my God, I got this. Like I deserve this. The universe, God, whoever, my friends, whoever gave it to you, you were just like, oh my gosh, I am so incredibly grateful right now. I'm so thankful. And that bubbling inside of you, tap into that. Just remember how that felt. Mm. Just bring it up. And now that you have that, like bring that up. And what I want you to do is I want you to imagine, I'm going to say a knob, but these days nothing really has a knob on it anymore, but you know how you can turn the volume up or down. So just imagine that you turn the volume up on that. So now let's just say it's at five. You feel it. You remember it. It's at five. And then you just bring it up to six, seven. Just turn it up. Turn that knob to eight, let it expand in your body and just allow your whole body to permeate this feeling. Every cell in your body feels it and it feels so good and you're so familiar with it. And anytime you want to return here, all you have to do is recall this feeling, that thing that you just recalled, and then turn up that volume. Just imagine yourself turning up that volume and letting it permeate through your whole entire body, every cell in your body, every nerve ending, let it go there. Just let go and release as you turn up the volume on your gratitude, on your joy. I want you to turn down the volume on your complaints, on your frustration, on your fear. Just turn that down, 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 down. Let that go low. Let your gratitude go high. And just feel that happening. And the first time you do it, it might not be that easy. But you try it again and again and again until you, oh, you got it. And now you have control. Mm. So I said we we're going to talk about controlling the controllable. So control the controllable is this. You know how. So I say there's three things that we have to look at, three boxes. There are people. There are events, and then there's you. So of those three, which one do you have control over? People, ta, year, right, we wish, not even our children. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then, Maybe when they're like newborns. <laughs> exactly, and, and then you can forget about it. I just, my daughter just had a baby and my daughter's like pulling her hair out how much she cannot control this baby. <laughs> so... I think I'm like a master at this. I, I, I can get Jada to do the things I want her to do, but it takes, it takes some patience. And yeah. so you really don't have control over people. You want to, you can influence them, you know, you can manipulate them, but do you really want to manipulate somebody into doing what you need them to do? No. So let that go. Let go of trying to control people. Mm -hmm, just like that. Just let it go. Just make a decision to let that go. Stop doing it. You're going to stop it today. Just make a decision. You're going to keep doing it, but at least make the decision. And then as you continue to say, ah, that was my decision. You'll start to notice, going back to notice, you'll start to have some awareness of where you're trying to control people. Now there's events. There are past events. There are future events, neither of which you have control over. The past events already happened. You cannot change them. The future events, you can try to influence them, but the very best way that you can control what happens in the future is to be present, control this very moment right here, control you in this very moment, because that's really all you have control over is you. And even that is limited, right? Yeah. <laughs> Under the circumstances. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you got all these emotions rolling around and your brain is powerful, but it doesn't rule you. You rule your brain. You are not your brain. So right. we're going to do some work because controlling your brain 
just isn't that easy, but it is possible. Mm. Mm. I want to make that distinction. I'm not saying all of this is just wave your magic wand, boom, boom. Lavinia said, do it. I'm doing it. It's done. (laughs) No, it's going to take some effort, but you got to want to do it. If if we should collaborate and create that magic wand together, that would <laughs> that would go viral. That Just would. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's highly sought after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, now that you're really clear on it's you that you control, then the next thing you can do is go back to what we just talked about. How do you want to feel? You already know that. You're clear on how you want to feel. You just get distracted by how you currently feel. And Mm -hmm. I completely understand that. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure I make this clear to you as well. There is nothing wrong with you. Like you're fine. Everything you need is inside of you already. But two things happen. Either a bunch of stuff gets piled on top of it. So you can't even get to your greatness or it gets chipped away at and chipped away at and chipped away at until you can't even find it because it's all fragmented in all these little pieces. Now, I don't know which one happened to you, but I know it happened. So either you're going to collect all the pieces and bring them together so we can see that wonderful side of you again, mm. or you got to remove all that crap that got piled on top of your greatness. Move mm. it, just start lifting it off one layer at a time. And you don't have to do it by yourself, which you already know because you're here. So that's, give yourself a hand for that. You know, we're so hard on ourselves and society keeps telling us how awful we are. And then we see everybody else's feed and going back to comparing, we're like, oh, she's so awesome. Look at her awesome bookshelf. Uh, How does she do that? I'm like, you have no idea how hard it was to create this bookshelf, (laughs) right? No, (laughs) that is not my expertise. You just see the rest of this room, this bookshelf. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so true <laughs> so stop it stop comparing yourself to this little square you see me in you see your whole entire life right you see your whole entire life the big picture you see my little one frame and you're going to compare yourself to me don't do that to yourself that is not fair I'm showing you my highlight reel I'm admitting it to you. You see my highlight reel and yeah. you're seeing your blooper reel and you're comparing those two. Now the blooper reel is fun. You watch, you know how you watch a movie at the end of the movie, they show you the bloopers. You love it, but it's only it's fun. Like after. It. Yeah, I love the blooper reel, but it's only fun after you've actually seen the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so pay attention. Notice your movie. You've had some good points, some highs, some lows, you know, but look at the whole movie. And then don't look at my highlight reel, though. Don't look at my trailer because it's good. I love to make the trailer look good, but I know that I've had some ups and downs. Now, I told you I fell in love in 2020. But also, if you listen to my podcast, I'll tell you, I had to let go of my whole entire team. A couple of months later, I hired a whole new team that I, oh my God, I love so much. But the times when I was letting my team go felt crappy. I was like, I felt like I was letting those people down. I was letting myself down. Like how I came so far and now I felt like I was starting over again. I mean, I wrote the book on it, but, (laughs) but still starting over is not fun, but there's an art to it. And I have mastered it. And that's what I share with the world. All of these little tips, they build up, but I want you to take them one by one, because if somebody gave you 12 steps at once, what is the likelihood that you're going to get to all 12? No, no, you need like one or two, maybe three tops and you can get through those. And then you come back. Oh, Lavinia. Okay. What's next? Right. I love that. And that is for sure. I mean, I, I always use metaphors. I grew up in a football family. So we always, you know, my mom and dad always use these metaphors about a football game. You know, you don't go out there. You just try to get the first down. Mm -hmm. You you get the first down. You get the first down. You don't go out there and just try to throw the ball. I mean, and get the touchdown. I mean, unless you're, you know, you're, yeah, you're at 10 seconds left in a game, (laughs) but exactly unless we don't have like enough, we're in 10 seconds left in our life, then maybe we would do that, right? But it's, yep. it really is 
being able to, well, I know you talked a little about falling in love and that was actually my next question because I know on your podcast, it's an amazing story. And <laughs> what I love about it, it wasn't like you, you, you chose, you had to, you had to choose. So I think, um, I think they would love, our community would love to hear that story if you would share that with us. Oh yeah. Okay. So he has a version and I have a version. So I'm going to tell you my version. <laughs> I always believe the woman's version. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to even before I met him, I was on online dating and I did it during the, the pandemic and it, even before that. And it was just impersonal and it felt like it took a lot of effort. And mm -hmm. I'm like, look, I'm pretty, I'm smart, got a great body. Like it can't be this hard. I'm sorry, it just can't be this hard. And so it was getting harder and harder. And a lot of times I felt like people were just on online dating to get likes. It was like, oh, she likes me. Cool. Now I know she likes me. Let me go on to the next one. Does she like me? That's how I felt. So I was just bored. I was like, you know what? This is boring. This is not for me. I'm going to meet somebody in real life. <laughs> Imagine that. And during the pandemic. <laughs> so I just made that decision. <laughs> <laughs> all my single friends you better be watching this <laughs> so I was like delete 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 deleted all my profiles because I believe that if you tell the universe something right I just told the universe I want to meet somebody in real life then I got to get off of virtual dating because that is not the real life that I was talking about yeah. so that's first thing that like I like to point out is that once you make a decision then you have to do the things towards that decision so I made that decision, got off online dating, started, but I had to start doing something, right? He wasn't coming at, he wasn't, he could have came to the front door, but that wasn't likely. So I was like, let me get out of this door. So what can I do? I got to do something outside because it's during the pandemic. And I wanted to learn to play tennis again. So I started playing tennis and he was playing tennis. So this is the, I don't even remember if I told this part on the podcast, but I was going to, I joined the country club because I'm a little bougie. So I joined the country club <laughs> and, and that's my way of networking. I love networking at the country club. And so I joined the country club. I'm playing tennis with the ladies at the country club. And they happened to mention there's this other place that you can get like 30 days for $30. I'm like, what? 30 days of tennis for $30. That's crazy. So of course I'm taking this deal. I am the money mentor, right? I'm taking this deal. <laughs> so forget I paid thousands of dollars, right? I'm going to, I'm going to the $30 version. So I go over this, this center. I cannot even believe they do this for $30. It is gorgeous. So I go over to this gorgeous center and I join this 30 for 30 is what they called it. And, and Jason, that's my boyfriend's name. He's in this clinic. And so here's the thing though, when I met him, he looked so mean. He was so serious and his tennis game was so good that he was like, ear, ear, ear. he was not taking any prisoners. He was not nice. <laughs> it was like, I don't care if this is that you guys are beginners. I'm not a beginner. I'm going for it. <laughs> <laughs> just like a man right he's he was even doing a little primal therapy with the racket <laughs> <laughs> exactly just straight up Get man <laughs> yeah. his testosterone was heavy and so but he was so serious at the time now here's what I didn't know he had just experienced a huge loss so he was still grieving and tennis was his way through his grief so not knowing that all I saw was he looked mean and I was like, man, this man looks mean. I'm going to stay out of his way. And I actually said that to him. So one day, you know how you like, you run up against somebody and you like try to go one way. And I was like, let me get out of your way. And he could not believe I said that to him because he didn't know he looked mean. And so he was like, why would she say that? So he went home and he asked his best friend. He's like, you know, the girl I told you about at tennis, like, this is what she said to me today. And his friend said to him, well, well, man, you can look mean sometimes. <laughs> and then when he said to his friend, he said, she is nice to everybody. Why would she mean to me? And his uh -huh. best friend said, if she is nice to everybody, it had to be something about you. Mm. And first of all, I was just like amazed that he has friends like that. Because a lot of times, you know, as a therapist, I know that men don't always want to talk to each other about their like deep 
challenges. It's like, they just fake good. And then, you know, and they just accept each other the way they are. They don't like try to correct each other or anything. Wait, did you say they just fake good? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I never heard that. Oh, I'm faking good. <laughs> I have to borrow that. I love yeah, it. Take it. They just make good. <laughs> Kane, I love and you. They, yeah. And they do it so well. <laughs> they so, it. But Jason wasn't faking good. He was like, yeah. he had this serious mean look on his face. And so his friend pointed that out to him. So first I just commend that his friend said the real, like he just gave him the realness. Mm -hmm. And then he took it and did something with it. He didn't just go like, well, forget her. I don't care. She don't know what she's missing or whatever. No, he came back. He straightened it out. Mm -hmm. But here's the fun part. So we accidentally get paired as a team. We actually get paired together and we crushed it. Like bam, 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 bam. Every shot, even the pro was like, wow, you guys didn't miss one shot. And so Jason turns to me, he was like, did you see that? We communicated, we didn't even use words. We communicated with energy. Mm. And I was like, energy? What do you know about energy? <laughs> <laughs> That's my word. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So he like totally got my attention. And what I saw then he was lit up like that winning streak that we were on. He, it lit him up. And I saw past that like hard me her hurt interior exterior all the way to his interior like I saw his heart shine and I was like mm -hmm. oh and so here's the fun part too this gets, it gets even better so we're talking we're having conversations now mind you he had been hearing me talk to other people so he knew I was into health and all these things and meditation and he was too and so he's telling me all the stuff that he's doing because he knows that I'm interested in this stuff and I'm like wow 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 so at the end of as of our conversation I said make sure I get your number before we leave here and so he said okay and so he texts me and he says I mean I text him and he and I was like oh hey here's here's my number and I text him and I say hey Jason this is your tennis friend Kane just wanted to make sure you have my number and so I send him a text and he waits two hours and he responds ignored my friend I put him in a friend zone he totally ignored that and he says <laughs> hey I found this restaurant I think you might like let me know if you want it what day you want to try it I was <laughs> like well I assumed the clothes clearly <laughs> wow Good. So I texted him back and I was like, I'm in house Friday. <laughs> I love that. And we've been inseparable ever since. I mean, inseparable. <laughs> that is magical. So magical. It has been so much fun. But the, there were a couple lessons there, you know, and it's a love story and it's cool. But like, if you, like you pointed out, I didn't just sit in my house and wait for him to come knock on the door. And he took action when his friend told him that you do look mean sometimes, you know, and, and he was patient, you know, he could have just let it go, but he was patient through it. And I saw past, like I was vulnerable enough to change what I originally thought I saw to what was really truly inside of him. Those really are great lessons because so often we project our own story yep. uh, to what we see. Um, and it really isn't always reality, right? Mm -hmm. It very often is our uh, perception through our own wounds, through our own traumas, through our own lens brings that story forward. And um, it's, I love it. And I love the fact that you found love in the middle of the pandemic. It's, yes. it's so, it's so great. And that it you're is. out there playing. And wait, I have a question though. Do you guys still play tennis together? Or yeah. Was oh, good. Yeah, we still play tennis. So we do our clinics um, on Friday together. And then he does a clinic by himself or with the guys. And then I do a clinic with my team. And then we sometimes will play together. And actually we're trying to get on a team right now where we'll like complete with other couples. Mm -hmm. We're looking we're looking for that right now. So I that's going to be that. mm -hmm, that's I gonna love be. that story. Okay, ladies out there. 
the not guy is not going to be knocking on your door. I mean, unless he's a really cute pizza guy, if you're delivering pizza, but that's about the only way that that's going to happen. Exactly. Especially <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> I do have a friend though that once had a fling with the pizza guy. <laughs> that's an, that'll be another show. Lucky him. <laughs> Okay. So now that we we have like some things figured out, we have like the love thing, a little understanding of how we need to maybe um, move things around and make some choices and um, pivot and do the other way. But let's talk about the big money thing, because that I know it really is your lane. I mean, yeah. it's like you really talk about where we get stopped emotionally, mentally even physically to really yep. create prosperity um, and how uh, very often we just have to really change our mindset on the way we look at money, right? Or the way we yep. look at prosperity. So um, I, I really want to hear about that. Let's take okay. this. <clears throat> so I'd like to start by saying, so I was a, a former Morgan Stanley financial advisor. And what I realized while I was there was that people needed help with more than just stock picks and numbers. Like there was trauma, anxiety, and even depression in the way of them getting to the beautiful financial plans that I would create for them. So they couldn't even get that done because of all the money history that was in the way. And so those financial plans nowadays, I call them your money mission. And your money mission can be very important to you, but there are all these other things that seem to get in our way. And a lot of times it's what I call our programming. And your programming are the, 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 the beliefs that you have about money. And those beliefs came from the phrases that you heard over and over and over again. And I'm sure, Lavinia, you've heard them. We Everybody has them, you know, like the money doesn't grow on trees and the love of money is the root of all evil. And she works hard for the money, you know, go to school, get a good job. All of those phrases programmed mm. us. Mm. And they make us believe certain things. Now, what I believe is going to be slightly different from what you believe, but we all have our beliefs. And those beliefs make up what I call our money mentality. And your money mentality is basically your money personality, but your money mentality is your money reality. So whatever it is that you're programmed to believe is what happens in your life. So you have to train your brain for change. It's not just going to change on its own. Your brain likes familiar. So it's going to go towards the familiar. So if you're wondering, why do I keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result? is not the definition of insanity. It is the definition of humanity because uh, yeah. <laughs> that's just the way the brain works. And thank goodness that it does because we at least know that going back to that awareness. Mm -hmm. Now that's awareness. And another step in the control of controllable is acceptance. So you gotta just accept that about your brain. So I wanna make this clear. The brain's job is pr to protect you. It is not to make sure you uh, have great money programming or, or that you fall in love or that you have the career of, of your life. None of that. That's not the brain's job. It is to keep you alive. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all. And it does a great job of doing it. So I suggest you thank your brain. It has kept you alive this long. Instead of criticizing it and getting angry with it, thank it. Thank you, brain. Oh my gosh, you're so good at keeping me alive. You're, just, you're the best at it. Right? Just thank your brain, accept that that's where it is. But then there's some things you need to adjust. So awareness, acceptance, adjust. What do you want to adjust? Maybe those old beliefs that you have about money. Let's start there. And we can go back to the awareness. Just think about it. What are some of the things you heard growing up? Well, I definitely heard money did not grow on trees. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big one. Um, I did have the correlation that you worked it, like you worked for money, like it was an yes. earning and it was a, you know, um, uh, I would say that that was a big one. Um, yeah. For whatever reason though, you know, I was a person that liked to spend. Mm, okay. 
like I was a spender. Like when I would get my Christmas money, some of my other siblings would put theirs in the bank. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just, I was just, I don't know. There was something about flowing. Um, I'm, and, and, which is interesting because I, I don't, I, I, I'm a very generous person. I think, you know, that's like a word people always use with me on many levels that I'm so generous, but I think I am. Um, and I know some people that really know me wouldn't think that I'm like frugal, but I am like, I'm, I'm, I have discernment in how I spend my money. I don't know. I have a little bit of, I worry a little bit. Mm. I have a little bit of worries, a little bit of fear, like, oh my God, I hope I'm, I, I, I always like, I, I call my money manager, or my money financial people. I'm like, are you sure I'm not overspending? Are you sure I can spend this? Like <laughs> I a lot of reassurance, like that I can actually, that I'm not living. I, I have a lot of fear about living above my means. I don't want to live. I want to make sure I'm staying within a place that's, um, you know, I'm, I'm living on my interest. I, I have a lot. And sometimes like um, I'll, I'll even get worried. Yeah. Sometimes I'll get like worried, especially with this pandemic, with everything that happened, all my real estate, a lot of our real estate, um, you know, people aren't paying our tenants. And um, I didn't lose, I wouldn't say I lost a lot of sleep over it, but I would notice that it was like a background of additional maybe stress that I was feeling yep. during this. Like, um, and then I needed a little bit more reinforcement that everything's going to be okay. And so I don't know what that is. I don't know where I will. Um, and it, so it really sounds like it was an evolution, right? So maybe you started out as a spender, but I believe that there are seven money personalities and some of what you are saying, that seventh one I call the president and that one has harmony on all the areas of what I call the money cycle. Now, let me define that. I believe the money cycle is earn, grow, protect, gift, and enjoy your money. And based on when you talked about yourself as you grew up, it sounds like you're harmonious through that. You are, you are earning, you're, you are growing it. You are protecting it. You have some concerns there and you're really checking on them to make sure, Hey, am I doing the right things? You are gifting because that's a very important part of the money cycle. You need to do that and you have some enjoyment, but you're not just throwing money out the window. So it sounds like you've evolved from maybe that spender to maybe the president possibly mm -hmm. um, because the spender unlike maybe your brothers and sisters, the spender doesn't know what else to do with money. And that's why they do it. They're just like, hey, here, oh, I got money, let's spend it. Got money, let's spend it. That's just what a spender does. But then there's the savers, like maybe your brother and sister might've been. Um, and the saver is, okay, here we go. I got money. Let's talk about what we're gonna do about with this in the future. It's nothing right now. The money is not for right now. That is what a saver does. But those are the two we are mostly familiar with, mm -hmm. except that there are others. And mm -hmm. so enthusiast looks like a spender. Well, let me make it a distinction. I call it enthusiast and enthusiast because they are always excited about the money and <laughs> they are unapologetic about it. They, these people love money and they want you to know it. <laughs> but here's what they do. They spend money on wants. So they're going to make sure everybody has a good time. They're going to buy the bar and you're going to love to be around an enthusiast, especially this time of year, <laughs> holiday season. And so the enthusiast is going to make sure everybody has a good time. They are there to take care of your wants. Now I'm going to skip over the blamer and come back to that one. But then there is the hero and the hero is the person that's going to take care of needs. That's the person you call if you need your mortgage paid, if you got a boot on your car, if you you know need to pay your kids tuition and you're short, that's the person you call the hero. The hero loves to rescue. They are I very definitely was a hero for a while. Yeah, I could see I went, that. I went through the hero. I mean, to the point where honestly, Kane, I, I wanted, I was this close to putting a message on my cell phone saying, hey, this is Lavinia. If you're calling for money, like I'm tapped out <laughs> because it just felt like the word got well, out there. Like, oh my God, if you're short, go to Lavinia. So like, <laughs> I mean, like I got to the point where I just wanted to put that on my machine. If you're calling for money, like, no, I'm not giving any more money up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, that is, is eventually what happens is eventually you take that crown off, you, you take that cape off, that pedestal you were on, you jump down off of it and you're like, I'm done saving the world. Like every man, every man for himself, you eventually just er, raise <laughs> on. <laughs> and, also realize like you're really not helping them. No. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that was so sad to me, honestly, was that a lot of the people that I did that with they were so embarrassed that they couldn't pay me back that I don't even have a relationship with them. So wow. even when I've had to say, Hey, like, we're good. I don't, you're, you don't need to pay me back. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Like I, I didn't shame anybody cause I've already did my work and I knew not to do that. I didn't shame myself, but mm -hmm. it's sad because I have like four or five people in my life that aren't really there now because, and because of money. Yep. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because there is actually a connection between love and money. And we do what we do with money to get love and acceptance. So when you don't want to raise your rates, it's not because you don't think you're worth it. It's because you're afraid you won't be loved or liked. Your, your, your clients or your patients or whatever will leave you if you raise your rates and you don't want them to leave. You don't want to be abandoned. So you keep your rates the same so you can keep your love and acceptance. Um, when, when I was a hero as well. So when we're giving money out, we think, oh, cool. Everyone loves us. Everyone loves us. Now this is subconsciously. We don't know consciously that we're doing this. So subconsciously, we're just trying to get our love and we're taking care of people and we're loving on them. This is our version of loving them, making sure they're good. We take care of their needs. Call us. We'll got, I got you. And then we go to rehab <laughs> and the store closes. <laughs> bank is closed but we find other ways to get love and we realized we really weren't like you said there's a point there's a point where you're love you're loving somebody and you're doing what's best and then you you skate over that line and you go to pleasing and when you go to pleasing it's not about love anymore and yeah. you're going to feel resentment and you'll know that you cross that line because it'll feel a little icky You'll feel that little icky feeling and you're like, oh. And then when you see their name on your phone, you're like, oh, here she is, right? And that's because you did it to please them. You did not do it out of the kindness of your heart. So as long as you can, as long as it's out of the kindness of your heart, go there. But the moment it crosses over into pleasing, not helping, because you're not helping anymore. Now you're pleasing. And then pleasing becomes enabling because now you're their God and they can't solve their own problems unless you're there. And we love that feeling for a little while. Yeah. Yes, I'm the God. Call me if you need anything. I solve all problems. My yeah. magic wand is fully working. It's fully charged. Let me ask you something, though, because other people have said to me, and this is I, that you don't, don't lend money unless you are prepared to not receive it. Like it just gift it. Yes. Like, cause when you like, what is your feeling about that? I'm 100% with that. You should just give it like, this is what I say. You have, you know, you know how much you earn, right? And of the money you earn, you have some going to your savings or your investing, but you also have your gift fund and whatever that number is. I don't care if it's $20. I think, I don't care how much money you make, even if you're making minimum wage, listen to this right now, you have set some money. I don't care if it's a dollar, you set some money aside to give away and you should always have that. But Whenever it's gone, it's gone. Say it's a hundred dollars, hundred dollars gone, it's gone. But you set that money to give away. So that is your boundary right there. Mm -hmm. I have a hundred dollars each month to give away and you can hold on to it. And next month, if nobody asks you, now you have 200. Somebody comes and say, can I have 250? You know what? I have 200 for you. You don't have to even give it back. You're going to need to get that 50 somewhere else. I'm not going to give you that. I don't have it. I have 200 in my gift fund. It's for you. That's it. That's all. And I would, I'd, love for, I'd love for you to explain a little bit, because I really believe the, the power of gifting is it's part of our uh, health, even it's yes. part of our spiritual our soul. It's so explain in your words why gifting is so important for a human being. 
Yeah. So, well, you've, you've heard the saying, talk about programming, it's better to give than to receive, right? You know, that programming. Well, that's not true. It's a, it's a different side of the same coin, giving and receiving, but it's a circle. So somebody's giving and somebody receiving. We got to keep that circle going. We got to keep it flowing. Money, all of this is just energy. It's the flow. And you get into the flow of it by having the heart to find some generosity. That's part of the money cycle, I talked about that earlier. So you earn it. It's coming to you, right? And we I use the word earn, but like we talked about earlier, it doesn't necessarily mean hard work. I want to make that clear. So you earn it. You flow the money to you as you attracted that money, right? And now you need to put some of that in a place where you can grow it. So it'll be there for you in the future. And then you need to put some things in place to protect it. That might be boundaries, being able to say no to yourself and others. That might be risk med mitigation, insurance. You know, maybe you have a really good tax attorney or a tax, a CPA, right? You make sure you're protecting your money. You don't want to pay more than your fair share in taxes, but you also don't want to give more than your fair share. So giving is part of that money flow. You got to keep it going. And at one point you needed something, right? You receive, you become an excellent receiver, just like you become an excellent giver. So you receive. And remember I skipped over the blamer. The reason why I skipped over the blamer, because the blamer doesn't do that exchange well. They don't do the give and receive. They just receive, 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 take, 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 take receive, receive, receive. But eventually it stops for them. Mm. people see their names on the, on the cell phone and they stop answering. It does come to an end. And so if you don't learn to also give, it will come to an end for you because it just works that way. It is a flow and you want to be able to get in that flow and keep that flow going. It is not about just flowing to you. You also need to let it out. And if you let it out, then it's going to flow back to you anyway. So let it go. <laughs> right. I love that. Yeah, I was, I had to work on being a receiver. I was uh, on many levels. I, I didn't, I wasn't born being a receiver. I think I just, uh, my, my nature was much more being the, the giver, uh, being, you know, um, I don't know. And then I, I heard some people say, oh, well, when you're the giver, it's because you're more controlling because you're controlling the situation. I don't know. I never felt this way. I just was a person that really, I just was more comfortable giving and, and, and that and receiving was always really awkward. Like when somebody would say, even to this day, when my husband says, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, oh, I don't want anything. I just, I go to that place because I don't know. I, I'm just, that's like, it's not as where I'm as comfortable receiving. And now when I, you know, I, yeah. So it's Absolutely. just interesting. It's like, it, the, the things you realize about yourself, even though I love, the, I love beautiful things. And I, I love when somebody finds something in it. Like my sister gave me this yesterday. Oh. And, um, I, and I, I just like, as soon as I, I saw it, I was like, Oh my God, I love everything about it. And it's, a, it's a piece that's called um, religion. My religion is love or love is my religion. Yes. And like, you know, like she nailed it. Like, I was like, well, first of all, I would have never found this jeweler. Like it wasn't on my radar. Um, so when you get something that, so like, then I think I'm a great receiver. <laughs> I was just about to say that. So I talked about that earlier, like giving yourself some grace and um, we, we can be so hard on ourselves and so judgmental. And I, I, I understand probably where the people are coming from to say that, you know, the, the giver is, wants to be the one in control and you're, you don't have control if you're receiving. I get that. And I understand that I don't subscribe to that. Um, what I also believe is that when you are as far as you are in the work that you have done, and even when you're younger, some of us are just born more wise or just more clear and you are clear as to what you want to receive. And everything that comes towards you is not necessarily yours, even if somebody is trying to give it to you. And so becoming an excellent receiver also means having some discernment as to what is yours. As it comes to you, you may feel in your heart, this isn't really mine. Like this isn't my thing. I have so much already. And I, the, what I need is this, is this little narrow thing right here. So if somebody gives me something inside this narrow space, then it's much easier for me to receive it because I know for sure this is mine. This is for me. 
These other things are just additives, just additives. And you might not need another additive. So that's what my spirit, that's what the universe is saying to me when it comes to you and receiving. Um, but receiving is something we do have to practice, especially us heroes. Heroes mm -hmm. have to practice receiving. So although I am making light and, and have giving you some grace on one end, I'm also saying there's still a muscle that you have to exercise at receiving. So it sounds like you are doing that work and you did receive well, and you lit up when you talked about that necklace. So mm -hmm. there is some, some joy and some ease in receiving for you, but if it's outside of what you need to receive your, your thing, then it is going to be a little bit harder to receive because you don't, you haven't made space for it, which means you'll then, if you want to receive it, would need to make space for it, which is not always easy. So you make space to receive that thing and you open up a little bit more and then you open up a little bit more and you learn to receive, but becoming an excellent receiver it's, 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 it's training. <laughs> You'd have to train your brain for that. Kine, I can stay on with you all day. I love, love, love talking to you, but I, we're, we're really I know. at the end. And uh, first of all, I know we're going to be putting on our um, LaviniaErico.com. We're going to be giving away your money mentality quiz. Oh, great. Um, which I'm so excited to share with our community. So guys, get on to um, LaviniaErico.com and, and you'll be able to see that. Um, and we're going to be putting on, I know you're doing a couple of, of, of different workshops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll definitely be sharing them. I want to try to do one of your workshops for sure as well. Oh, cool. Um, yes. Every time I'm on with you, I'm like, I need to learn more about that. I need to learn more about that. I need to learn. I, and that's just kind of what I am. I love to learn, especially when it's things that really I'm passionate about. Oh, so, oh, I need to make sure that is receiving. Just want to make that clear. Okay. What's receiving? Like learning. learning. Yeah. Okay, good. Then I'm a good receiver because I love to learn. Like that's really, and I love to, I love to learn. And then I love to share what I've learned, like curate experts, because I think, which is, I don't know, maybe not accurate, but I think because I love to learn, I just think everybody loves to learn. <laughs> like, I would just think that that would be such a great gift, you know, like it, it's because it's such a big gift for me. Me too. You know, I've learned something. I'm all like, that's really like the gifts I love to give to people are experiences. Oh, yeah. Touch yes. it and you feel it and you it's in your like and and their memories like I love that like they're I'm more of that like I don't feel like I'm as good at finding like the gifts like this like that's not my lane and sometimes I wish I could be more of that I just don't have that but my sister's an amazing shopper and she loves doing that and but like me, it's like, how can I create experiences for people and we do rituals together or we do little trips together like that uh, a day event together. Like, that's what I love. That's what yeah. is my comfort zone to create and give and, and that. But you know, it's like your conversations with you, it's like you get the popcorn popping, like all my ideas start going and I'm like, oh my God, I love this. It's amazing. But yeah. well, you just broke it down. You just, and I hope you saw that, that receiving is not about gifts all the time. It's not about the material things. That is just not your thing. The experiences are your thing. So you could likely receive those so much easier. And I'm with you. I'm with you. We would, we would like soar in that area because I'm all about the experiences. And you talk about love as your, your religion. Um, that that's it right there. That's, that's it. That's how you spread the love. You can spread the love in a gift. Yes. But you really spread the love in an experience because it's so much easier to go back to that thing. Remember in the beginning when we had to find our, that feeling, it's so much easier to return to that feeling than it is to return to a feeling like, oh, you bought me this. Okay. Yeah. I can kind of remember that. And I could kind of, but when you have an experience, you can really go back to that feeling. It's so great. Oh my God. Kine, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time during this crazy holiday season to share your wisdom, your love, your heart, your soul with our community. I'm so, so appreciative. And guys out there, I wish everyone a really safe, happy, 
holiday, uh, um, New Year's. We will be back. I have on the first, our first guest on is actually my personal astrologer, Michael Norris, and he is really, really, really amazing. He's so inspiring. So we'll see you all in January. Thank you so much. Bye, Kenny. Thank Bye. you. Bye.